to introduction, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, j just uh, hearing you mention about um, someone you taught in the past, funnily enough, um, as I was coming in here, I bumped into someone who said, who said uh, Mr. Holman, and um, it turned out to be the person who founded the organization that runs uh, f um, the, uh, the, the whole company that runs this event, and uh, he, he then passed it on to someone else. He is called Porter Keen, and I was headmaster of his school, so, uh, so there we are. Uh, I can't take any credit at all for the, the great things that have happened since then. So I'm going to talk to you about um, the research that led to the Gatsby benchmarks, which have been mentioned more than once, and which li now lie behind the government's um, careers strategy. But just before I do that, I'm, I was really interested in that uh, panel discussion on STEM. Because actually STEM is the reason why I got so interested in career guidance. Um, and I was reflecting so STEM stands, of course, for science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And when the gentleman made the point about his wonderful technology lab and how there weren't a lot of people using it for technology, I reflected that actually inside school, STEM looks a bit different from outside school. So on the panel, we had two people who basically work in STEM outside school and two people who are interested in it inside school. And if you think about STEM inside school, you've got science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The really big ones are the S and the M, the science and the mathematics. Those are the things that occupy so much of the curriculum inside school. But then if you step outside school and you look at the word STEM, it's really the T and the E, the technology and the, and the engineering that's going on out there in our workplaces day in, day out. Isn't that interesting that actually the emphasis of STEM is different inside and outside school? And bringing that back to career guidance, we do need to recognize that uniquely, amongst all the things that go on in schools, career guidance has an important element inside school and outside school. And the work that we did, and I'm going to tell you about in a minute, uh, around the Gatsby benchmarks, recognizes that and tries to integrate together what, what happens outside of school in career guidance and inside of school. And fi my final point about STEM is actually it's the reason why I got interested in career guidance. Me, I'm a chemistry teacher, former chemistry teacher in schools and then in universities. Uh, I'm a former head teacher. And I, I was, I mean, I just love it when people who I teach chemistry to, uh, or science in any subject, um, want to go on and study it further. I love that. Um, but I realized that actually, out there in schools, people think that science and maths are quite hard. And they, they are thinking to themselves, if I choose science and maths, how am I going to do as well as if I chose some other subject for future study? Now, it may or may not be actually true that science and maths are harder, but if people perceive them to be harder, then that, that's the only thing that matters. And so my line of thinking about career guidance was, you really do need to be telling people about all those great careers that you can do outside school if you study science and mathematics, particularly inside school. So that was really why I got so interested in career guidance. But the, the second reason was, when I was a head teacher, I was very aware that a lot of the youngsters in the school were getting great career guidance at home. They had wide, rich circles of friends, relatives, families that were giving them really good support and career guidance and, and, sh and opening doors to them and opening opportunities to them. But that's not true of everyone. And in my school, there were many people who came from families that just couldn't offer that kind of breadth and experience of, uh, and advice on future career options. And that was when I began to realize that career guidance in schools really is critical for social mobility, for closing those gaps between the most and the least privileged. Because if the school isn't giving good career guidance and they're not getting anything from home, then where will they get it? And so I, I, I am quite passionate about why career guidance is so important. Now let me just take you back 
to the piece of work that, that we have done with the Gatsby Foundation that's led to the career benchmarks. Back in 2013, so it's five years ago, um, we were very concerned about all the negative press that was coming out about career guidance. Ofsted had issued a, a negative report and so had the, uh, the um, Education Select Committee. And I, I was asking myself, and I was talking to Lord Sainsbury, who uh, is the settler of the Gatsby Foundation, and, and saying, you know, well, okay, we hear a lot of negative press, but what would it be like if it was good? Let's try and find out what good career guidance looks like. And that's what led to the study that we carried out. So we did a thorough review of all the research literature. We visited six countries which are known to have good career guidance, in-depth visits, 20 to 30 schools, talked to education ministers, head teachers, career specialists, pupils, employers, trying to find out the elements of good career guidance. And it was from that that we got the eight benchmarks for good career guidance. And there they are. Um, uh, the, they, those represent the things that schools that are if they are doing those things, those bench, reach, reaching those benchmarks, then they are getting good career guidance. Now, we published that report in 2014 and decided straight away that what we really needed to do was to try this out. So we set up a pilot in 2015 to 17 in 16 schools and colleges in the northeast of England. And we, we said to them, we want you to try and meet these eight, eight benchmarks. And then we think that by doing that, you will be achieving good career guidance. So it was, it was testing it. Now, the pilot began in 2015, and the starting point was to measure how many benchmarks each school was reaching. Remember, there were 16 schools and colleges. And at the beginning of the pilot in 2015, no schools or colleges got eight benchmarks, and the highest that any got was three benchmarks. So they were a long way behind meeting all of these benchmarks. That didn't surprise me, because having drawn these specifications up, I realized these are really hard. This is world class. So it, was, it would have been very surprising if we'd had large numbers of schools and colleges meeting them. Encouraging progress, by the end of 2016, although there were no schools or colleges getting eight benchmarks, there were also none getting zero benchmarks, and that was progress from before. And the average number of benchmarks they was reaching, were reaching was 2.5. And we went on doing it and working at it and challenging the schools, and by the end of the pilot in 2017, the average number of benchmarks being reached was 6.7. In other words, they were well on the way to reaching this world-class standard. And at that point, I began to think, really, maybe we are onto something here. Maybe we've got something that really will help schools to get good career guidance by world standards. What did it, why, why was it working? For, well, for one thing, there was a clear framework which schools could look at and of course, in the actual report, there's a lot more detail laying behind those. Schools could look at it and see how they were doing and what they had to do. And we also have an audit tool. It's called Compass. It's online. You can use it at any time to test your school. It's fully confidential to see how you measure up to the benchmarks. So that combination of a clear framework and the ability to measure yourself against it is something that any business leader will tell you is a strong formula for making good progress. And the other thing is that we found that employers were saying, we like these benchmarks because we can see where we fit in. And if you look up there, you'll see that numbers in five and six, at least, are very specifically about the role of the employer in good career guidance. So we're integrating together the jobs that the school and the employer does to achieve good career guidance. So certainly, the pilot in the northeast of England showed very clearly that this is a framework that works. And we began to try and identify what the elements were that had made it work. And it boiled down, as it does so often in education and in life, 
it boiled down to leadership. First of all, we had given the responsibility for the pilot to the Northeast LEP, Local Enterprise Partnerships in the Northeast of England. And they put in place very good leadership, a, a very good person who could work closely with the schools to make sure that they were, uh, they knew what they had to do and that they were motivated towards it. So it, there, was, there was leadership at that kind of hub level. Second aspect of leadership that we quickly discovered, and this won't surprise you, was that you need leadership at the school level. And what we found was that the, success, the most successful schools were identifying a person, usually a middle manager, a person in the school who would be the career leader. Now, this is not unknown, of course. When, when I was a head teacher, I had a person doing that role. They were called the career coordinator. But there was, they didn't really think of themselves as the person who led this activity in the school. And that, that idea that there is someone who has the leadership role of conducting this orchestra, because it's a complicated activity, and who has the, um, the backing, the explicit backing, of the senior leaders in the school. So the career leader is a critical role. And those are the, that, that was what we discovered um, from the, uh, the benchmarks pilot. Now, while that pilot was going on, uh, we said to the Department for Education, um, we've got something interesting happening up in the northeast of England. Would you like to get on the train to Newcastle? It's only three hours. And up they went. And we had some senior officials visiting. And we had um, uh, at least one minister visited. And that, so they could see at first hand that things were happening in a very interesting way in these schools in the northeast. And then I was, as you can imagine, very pleased when the Department for Education published its career strategy at the end of last year with the eight benchmarks embedded in it and the statutory guidance that goes with it. Uh, explicitly, the whole careers guidance policy is built around these, these benchmarks. And of course, that's very pleasing for someone uh, in my position. Um, I'm also pleased that there is an organization that, that has been given the responsibility of implementing this career strategy, which is called the Career and Enterprise Company. You heard earlier from Claudia Harris uh, about the Career and Enterprise Company. I think they're a very effective organization which, which is charged with implementing this new policy. The government has made funding available for the training of career leaders. I said just earlier that career leaders, the people in the school who lead this activity with the backing of the school leadership, career leaders are critical people and they need training. Some of them know the job well, others it may, may be completely new to them. And so the government has provided money to enable the training of career leaders. And in fact, tomorrow I'm going up to Leeds to meet a whole set of trainee career leaders and talk to them about, about this work. Um, and so we, we, we do have government backing for this program. Yesterday, no, day before yesterday at the Conservative Party conference, there was an announcement of uh, increased funding for training of, of uh, school career leaders and for uh, careers hubs. So we're in a good place. I think this is a propitious moment for a career guidance because we are acutely aware in this country of the, the advantage gap that lie between the best and the worst advantaged in, in our society. And we all know we have to do something about it. And we can see now that career guidance is an important ingredient towards get it, fixing that problem. But the whole thing is as exacerbated by a set of other, another situation which includes Brexit. Because looked at from the outside, there is deep concern about where the skills, the skilled people in the future who are needed, particularly for STEM-based, but for all industries actually, where are they going to come from? And we heard something of that uh, in, in that in the discussion that we had earlier. So concerns about 
the supply of people with good skills, the right skills, and concerns about this being exacerbated in the future. So I think we are at a moment when things are very propitious for improving the standing of career guidance and the quality of career guidance uh, in, in schools. And I would urge you, because I know there are many school leaders here today and, and career leaders, to take advantage of what's on offer now, particularly around the training of career leaders um, that, that's available uh, through the career and enterprise company. But finally, I'd just like to bring you back to my principal reason for why this is important. We've talked about the needs of the economy, but ultimately, the, the, the economy needs future talent, but youngsters need to be well-equipped to make the most of the opportunities that are going to lie ahead for them. And if they aren't, for many of them, if they aren't getting the guidance for that from their school, they may not get it from anywhere. So it's a huge responsibility, and I look forward to seeing how we progress with this policy. Thank you.